All right, hello everyone. We are back with another episode of All Things Real Estate. And as always, I am your host. It's Kyle Siebeth, no longer with Keller Williams Realty. I am now with Century 21. So we have made big moves and wicked excited. Uh, first of all, excited to be back, excited to be here, and excited for my guest today. So today um, with me, I have John St. Martin. And John has come over with me to Century 21. He's part of the Seabeth team. John is a very savvy agent. He's been doing this for a while. Um, so first of all, John, welcome. Thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Yeah. Very, so, very excited. Awesome, awesome. John's excited to be, <laughs> John's excited to be here as well. Um, so John, let's just get right into um, an agent of your magnitude. You've been doing this for a little while. How long have you been in the business? Uh, 10 years. So John's been in the business 10 years. Prior to Century 21, John was with me at Keller Williams, and for a brief stint, you kind of came over to KW. When did you come over to KW? After, for, before, before the beginning, yeah, like recently. Yeah, yeah. Um, in the end of, end of March. So, been there like four so months March now. 2020, right in the middle of COVID, John made the switch from uh, his prior firm, and mm -hmm. you were with, prior to that, you were with whom? Nathan Clark. So John was, he was with Nathan Clark for a while, um, then transferred over to, uh, to Keller Williams in March 2020, and then recently has made the switch over to Century 21. So a lot of moves in a short period. Yes. <clears throat> yes. That's, that's, that's pretty good. Um, but I think it's important that John saw the value in what we're doing here at the Seabeth team at Century 21, and I think the value there is our ability to really care for our clients whether they're buyers, whether they're sellers, and my ability to help John and the staff that we'll be introducing to you as we go on to increase their production, right? I would say, is that one of the big reasons you came over? That's <clears throat> the, the reason. You know, I mean, I, I, I was doing okay, but, you know, I want to ramp it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I know you being the you know, number one realtor out there, you know, I couldn't be with a better guy. And, and that's great. And I think my position... Um, you know, obviously with Keller Williams, I was a one-man band, and then this year, 2020, we added on some other agents to try to put more of a team, um, a team process together, which we started in January. You weren't with us in January. You probably didn't come over till like, March, April when you actually came over with us. Prior to COVID, we had so many clients that we were helping, buyers and sellers and all that stuff. Then what happened is COVID hit. Two, three-week period, buyers kind of slowed down and sellers slowed down. But the bigger problem, in my opinion, and I want to ask you your question, isn't the lack of buyers. I think the problem is the lack of listings. It was absolutely the lack of listings. Like when I left, um, you know, in just this year, when the, when the COVID things happened, I had, a, I had a couple of listings where people took the house off the market because they just didn't want people in the house anymore. There was one single mom that, with three kids and the little kids and she just didn't want people in her house anymore. So I, you know, we canceled that listing and I canceled a couple. Um, so just for fear of that. And, you know, it took, took a little while for people to get comfortable again mm -hmm. to, get, to get back out there. So like you say, it's definitely, you know, way more buyers than there are sellers right now. If, if you know, if, if you're a seller, the house is, you know, keep, we can't keep them on the market because we get, there's so much competition. Every offer I've made in the last, in the last couple months has been over asking price, every single one, and I'm still not getting the bids on them. Wow, so stop for a minute. Yeah. So explain that if I'm, if I'm a novice and I'm listening to what you're saying, you're saying to me that if a house is listed at 200, you're listing, you're, ask, you're offering, your buyers are offering over 200. Yeah, probably 220. And you're you not know, getting it. And still not so getting it. So 10% yeah. or more and you're still not getting it. That's yeah. how competitive it is. Yeah. Yeah. Can you talk about, and there was, one, there was one listing that you and I talked about recently. It was a multifamily in Pawtucket. I think it was on Lucas Street. Um, that three family, the Red House. Yeah. You remember? Yeah. How many people would you say, give or take, were at that showing? 40. 40. So mm. a multifamily in Pawtucket, off Smithfield Ave, in Fairlawn section of Pawtucket, had 40 people listed at what, 280? Two, yeah, 280. 280. 285, so 285, at 285 maybe. 285 through 290, right? 40 people looking to offer. I know the other agent who had it. She probably got 20 offers. I think she got 22 offers. 22 mm. offers. You offered how much? 350. 350. So he offers 350 on a 280 house and he doesn't get it. That's how crazy 
this market is. And mind you, I know the situation. They didn't go higher than 350. No. They just went with a cash offer. They went with the cash offer. You know, so buyers, quick. right, they just went with a cash mm -hmm. offer. So buyers, guys, in this market, you have to be, and I would say, what would be your biggest advice? I'll give mine, but I want to hear yours first. What's your biggest advice to buyers in the current situation where we are right now? Um, <clears throat> you know, they just have to be patient for sure because, patient. you know, it's, 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 it's just hard to find, find homes. Um, you know, and when you, do, when you do get them, if they're, you know, if they've been on the market more than a week, it's it's probably not a, a house that's in great great Correct. condition. Um, but, but I also tell them, you know, what, if you see a house you like, you need to tell me today. We need to get there today, and because it's urgent that we we you know beat the other buyers out there. So it's interesting that you say that. So you say, in one hand, patience is your biggest advice, mm. but then on the other hand, urgency. Right, so it's funny because they're both yeah. polar opposites, but yeah. it makes sense because right. you need to have the urgency to get in something, get in it and get in it fast. Mm. But then you also have the patience to understand just because you got in it and you offered a big number doesn't mean you're going to get it. Right. And I, I've, this is the first time since I've been in this, and you said I think nine or ten years. I've been doing this nine years. This is the first time when I've had multiple buyers put multiple offers on the same properties at the same time. Meaning like I have five buyers who all offer on the same house, but then they're offering on six other houses. You know what I mean? Like I'm telling buyers to make offers on everything that they see if they like it. Mm -hmm. We could yep. put five offers out at once and we're still not getting them. Right. So you could go zero for <clears throat> five. Stats wise, and you may not know this, but I looked this up. In Rhode Island right now, if you were to guess how many single families are listed in Rhode Island and they give you kind of a relative benchmark. Last year at this time, there was 6,300. How many would you say are on the market right now? I, I don't think it's even 2,000. 1,300. 13, well, no. 1,300, so we ridiculous. have six times the amount of houses on the market last year, and you know last year wasn't easy either. No. Last year, there was still a seller's market. There was a ton of buyers. There wasn't a lot of inventory, no. highest and best. So we're six times below what we had last year. That's how crazy this market is. Yeah. And that's all prices, and that's the entire state. Yeah, I keep thinking that, you know, things are loosening up, and, you know, it's it's, it's, you know the, the sellers are going to come out in droves and start getting the house on the market, <laughs> and it's not happening. This mm. year's washed. In yeah. my opinion, 2020 is a wash. In my mm. opinion, that there's too much uncertainty. You have COVID potential round two. You have elections coming up in, in November. You have elections on the local level that will be coming up pretty soon. You've got the government that's on halt. You've got school systems. People don't know if the kids are going back to school. So I think with all this stuff, the public hates uncertainty. You add all this uncertainty into the mix, it, people don't know what to do. They mm -hmm. can't put their house on the market. Now, I think 2021 is the best real estate market we'll ever see. Yeah, it's going to be a huge comeback, it I'm sure. It is going yeah. to be the yeah. best real estate market we will ever see, ever. Because everyone that wanted to sell in 2020 won't, right. didn't sell. That goes into 2021. And everyone that heard how great of a seller's market, <clears throat> excuse me, this has been for five years, they're going to come and play. I think 2021 will see the closest thing to equilibrium we've seen in 10 years. And you'll see prices stay the same, but you'll see demand and, and, and supply be similar. And that's going to be a healthy market. Next year, yeah. if you're looking to sell or buy, I think you're in a good spot. This year, we're going to muddle through like we are, but next year, I think, all day. Yeah. And, and I think when you look at listings, John, would your strategy be to a seller, if I'm looking to sell my house, and I say, hey, John, I am not in a super rush. I want to get all the money for my house, <clears throat> but I'm really nervous about price reductions. What would you say to me? Like, What would be your biggest factor there that I could do? Well, I've, you know, the way I've always operated with sellers is that I, I believe, you know, you put the right price on the house right from the get go. You know, most, most of the sellers will say, well, you know, if I tell them the house is worth 300, I think the market is 300. Well, you know, maybe we should, you know, can try 325. And, you know, I said, you know, if the market, the market could push the price up. I said, right. but, you know, in order to get buyers in the door, you need to put a reasonable price on it. Because, right. you know, buyers are very educated today with all the access to the Internet. They, 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 they know as, almost as much as we do right. what, the, what the houses are worth. Right. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I like to, like to 
price things well and if you're you know lucky enough to get over asking price bids i mean that's great but then you also have to worry about is the house going to appraise at that right so that's yeah. a good call so what that means for everyone is if i list the house at 200 and i end up getting an offer at 270 but then the bank sends what's called an independent appraiser out to go and give a value for the buyer to determine if it's worth that let's say it appraises at 230 now what Right, so now the seller has a few options. They don't sell the house, they sell it at 230, or they say for the buyer to come in and make up the difference between 270 and 230. And, and I'm gonna ask you, how many times have you seen the buyer come up with the difference? <clears throat> very rarely. Very, and very oh. rarely, and the seller gets mad, and I'm like, guys, would you pay more then something's worth it. Just doesn't yeah. make sense. Yeah, it's you, nonsensical. You, yeah, you, you're, not, you know, you're making this big investment and you're gonna be you know, paying over, you know, uh, over the appraised value, which means you're, you know, you're underwater already on this house. Yeah. So day yeah. one, and I so worry why, who that would want to do that as an investment. Correct. Yeah. I mean, I think it's the only way I've seen it happen, and I've actually done it myself on some of the commercial buildings that I have. It, it appraised lower a couple of years ago, and I still bought it. I made up the difference when there's not a lot of comparables. So, it, for example, when there's not a lot of comps, like if it's a hard house to comp against. And it's like, wow, I don't, <clears throat> no one really knows what it's worth. And the appraisal comes in low, but you really like it for personal reasons and you're going to use it for your own usage. I think it makes sense. But on your typical 1,200 square foot ranch with three beds, one bath, never would I have a buyer overpay. Never, ever, ever would we pay more than that appraisal. Right? I mean, there's I a agree. million of yeah. them. <clears throat> it's a dime a dozen and you're going to be underwater day one. And the concern I have in this market, and you may agree, is that over time, some of these folks, if the market turns, are underwater pretty heavily right away, right? Because if they're paying, think about that multi. If your guy got it for 350, he's okay because he can hold it. He has the rents that can sustain it, and he'll be fine. Whereas if you buy a single family that's that value, 70 grand over, you need to panic sell it in a down market. What do you do? Yeah, take a big hit. You have yeah, to. Yeah. And that's where we come up with the short sales again. So essentially, 2008, 9, and 10, we saw this movie, right? We saw this already. We saw five, four, five, and six, the market go like this, and then eight, nine, and 10, they go back down. So I just hope that we have, is not as big of a bubble as it could be or it was back then. Uh, do you feel like it's a bubble? Right now? Yeah. Um, Pricing-wise, not just pricing wise you know i think i think if prices increase at all there's going to be you know a, a small percentage i don't i don't see them going down mm -hmm. uh, but i see them maintaining where they are maybe a, maybe a little bit of increase yeah what's your yeah. outlook so we're we're through the first half of the year mm -hmm. right first half of 2020 is gone with behind us we're already through july so we're actually 1 month into the second half what do you think the outlook is for 2020. I already gave my outlook for 2021 and 2020. But what do you think 2020 looks like? And then what do you think 2021 looks like? Yeah, I agree that I think that, you know, things the way they are right now, we're going to continue like that for a while. Um, it's going to be a tough market for buyers. And um, yeah, I think once we get, you know, you know, God forbid, I hope once we get into 2021, 20, that, you know, um, you know, maybe we've come up with a vaccine by now. That would be the best thing for us, everybody in the world. And, and you know, then, you know, the, I think the market's going to explode next spring. You know, where we saw, you know, every, every spring, you know, that's when buyer, sellers think that's the best time to list mm -hmm. the house, which I don't always agree. Um, you know, I've sold houses in, at Christmas. You know, All day. Yeah. I sell yeah. a ton in December. Yeah. And yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't matter. You know, I, I always tell my sellers, I say, if you wait till the spring, you're going to be competing against more pe people. Right. That everybody that thinks that's the best time to, to, to list. And it's a good time to list. There's, ne there's never really a bad time. If you're ready Agreed. to sell, then let's do it. Yeah. And, I, and I say this, and I use a different word for it, but I'll use the, uh, the, the, the cable ready word. I say there's a butt for every seat. Right? There's a butt for every seat, meaning there's always a buyer out there for that asset. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and you just need to find, and I, I tell people that real estate's very simple. There's a house, there's a buyer, and there's a seller. John and my, John and my job is to facilitate that transaction as easy as possible. And we need to make this something that can allow you to you know, sell your house with the minimal amount of time and the least amount of friction as possible for the most amount of money, or buy a house 
with the least amount of headaches for the best value and hopefully your family or your investment works out in the long term. Yeah. Would you agree? I mean, it's really Absolutely. It's very all, simple. You know, it's all about making, whether you're the buyer or the seller, you know, you got to make your client happy. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, and you got to, and you know, so they're relying on us for our expertise in, in, the, in the market and, you know, we need to deliver that. Correct. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a differentiator and, and I think you've seen this and I've seen this in the last three or four years, there's been a lot of newer agents coming in the market and a lot of times you see you know, Joe Buyer, Aunt Mimi just got her license and Aunt Mimi's gonna represent him. But the problem is they don't have that experience that someone like yourself would have and they can complicate a transaction. And I'm sure you see Absolutely. it yeah. all the time. I see it all the time where they may know the book of real estate really, really well, but the practical world and what happens out there in, 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 in the real world in real estate can be different and you need to be able to adapt and be flexible. And I, I, I see that all the time. When I'm dealing with an agent that I know that's seasoned and savvy, I get excited because I know how that deal is going to go. When it's an agent I don't really know, at that point it can be a little difficult because I don't know where this transaction is going to go. And they can kill a deal. I mean, I'm sure you've seen it in the past. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I, you know, I don't really recommend using family because right. yeah, they said, you know, whatever, you know, if, you know, it can cause friction in, in the family is it, how, what's more important, you know, have right. the, the, your family relationship or, you know, put, you know, putting a few dollars in your pocket at the benefit, you know, at the, you know, for the, um, at the cost of your relative, um, uh, you know, although I'm listing my brother's house in a couple of weeks, but, you know, so. <laughs> hey, so that's great. I, and I, I hope your family situation is different than mine. I can give a, a quick example on the, on the probably 10 or 12 deals I've done with my family. I'm probably down about 30K. Somehow, some way, when I sell my brother or sister's house, I put money up. <laughs> I lose money. I don't know how that works, oh, yeah. but I've lost on the last three transactions they've done. Um, oh, yeah. So family is definitely a tough thing, but we always want to take care of them and make sure that we, uh, you know, we give them the best service for the minimal cost. So hopefully mm -hmm. you... You make a commission on that one because it didn't work like that for me. Oh, I'm charging them. The, it's the highest percentage <laughs> I can get. That's beautiful. Where's the, where's the house? Uh, it's in Lincoln. It's, oh, that'd uh, be nice. It's, it's, you know, you can't, the house is fat, fabulous. It's a, you know, they've, you know, their, their laundry room is bet nicer than some people's living room. It's, there's nothing, nothing wrong with, with this house. Um, you know, I got a, you know, I think the, the, the deck is like a thousand square feet with its gazebo and oh, you know and it's set back. It's on an acre of land. It's really private. It's so about two twenty. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're looking. We're between four fifty and five hundred. Good for him. That's yeah. awesome. That'll be a good one, yeah. mm -hmm. and that'll be great in this market. Um, so, John, real quick, we're gonna wrap up here soon. Um, what advice would you give to an agent? Um, out there kind of in no man's land, doesn't know what to do, what would you say to them? What would be a good piece of advice from someone like yourself who's been doing it for almost a decade? Hmm. Good question. Um, it, it's one thing would be, as a matter of fact, I was talking to one of your new agents last night after our meeting, and you know, I talked to him for almost half an hour, and I was telling him, I says, you know, you're, you've made a good move because you're, you're putting, putting yourself in a situation where you've got Kyle's expertise. I said, you know, I'm available anytime mm -hmm. you want. I'm, I'm willing to help. So, you know, you need to, you need to be, you know, in a, in a group that, you know, where you have a lot of support. Because mm -hmm. if, you, if you're just trying to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this on my own, I'm going to do all my own prospecting, I'm going to do it, you know, you're gonna, it's going to take you a long time to get, to get, get some traction going. Um, so, you know, I think the best thing is partnering with a, with a good team, you know, so that you, yeah. have, you have the support. Mm -hmm. I would agree, and I think that's why the failure rate's so high, and I think that's why we see such a high failure rate in, in real estate in general, mm -hmm. is because a lot of people, especially now with the, with the very um, fluttered market with agents, mm -hmm. it's really hard to make, to make money and actually hard mm -hmm. to make a living. So we try to provide our agents with the ability to kind of get some traction, get out there, get momentum, and I'm a big believer of velocity and velocity and, and velocity and momentum. Those two things really translate into positivity. So that's what we're looking to do. And that's what we're looking to help people going forward. So, John, with that, we need to cut out, guys. End of all things real estate. We appreciate it. John has been a great guest. If anyone needs to reach out to me or John, uh, we'll have our contact information uh, on, on social media. Everyone have a great day.